Let's talk about something that professional drummers don't really want you to know. I hear from drummers all the time and they're putting a ton of pressure on themselves around this specific area. And I got to thinking like, this is something that professionals really don't want you to know, but that they struggle with as well. And really when you think about it, this is the meat and potatoes of being a professional, not just a professional drummer, but a professional in any field. This topic is key to maintaining your professional status. Here's the thing, no matter who your favorite drummer is, no matter how fantastic they are, no matter how well versed they are, and no matter how many different styles, no matter how many different albums you saw them play on this past year, or how many tracks you saw, or how many live performances, they're not good at everything all the time. As a matter of fact, with all professionals, there are several situations that if you ask them right now, what would strike fear in your heart? What would make you nervous? What's a musical, si they could give you several examples of, if I was dropped in this musical situation right this minute with no preparation, I feel like I would fall on my face, at least to them. Now, it may be that falling on their face looks a little bit different than you falling on your face because they've been playing so much longer, they have so much more experience, they can cover it up so much more. But I guarantee you with every professional drummer, there is a, there is a set of circumstances where they can go, you know what, I don't think I would perform well in that circumstance. The thing is, is if you see a drummer play on 83 tracks during a year, or you see them play on 15 albums, and every one of those albums, oh, I, but I saw him play on a, you know, this death metal album, then I saw him play on this killer straight ahead jazz album, then he played with this, you know, West African group, like, no matter how many you saw them, what you don't see is kind of like what you don't see on social media, like the behind the scenes, you don't see how much preparation goes into each one of those. Whenever a professional drummer or musician is tasked with, you need to do X at this next gig. Of course, they have like their bag, those things that, yeah, we can do that, no problem. And for some of them, it's much larger than others. But any time they're tasked with, this takes you outside of your comfort level, or, ooh, yeah, I can play that, but I need a week to brush up on that then you're gonna find them preparing for that gig, preparing for that recording session. So whenever you hear a track, you really don't know how long they've spent prepping. I, I can recall interviews with drummers that I love, and they said, yeah, it took me a year of hashing that track out because I didn't want to embarrass myself. I can remember an old article I read, I believe it was between whenever Ed Shaughnessy and Buddy Rich did a drum battle. They went back and forth personally with each other saying, okay, I don't want you, I think it was this Indian type of a rhythm that uh, Shaughnessy would play. Buddy Rich was like, I don't pull that out. And Shaughnessy's like, okay, well you don't pull this. And I think it was a crossover type of like, I'm, I'm like trying to remember here uh, an old article I read. And sure enough, both of them pulled both of them out uh, during the performance. But even each of them were like, okay, I can't do that. So don't pull that out. Let's not go there. Not too long ago, I was speaking to a percussion professor at Berkeley, one of my old teachers, and that's what he was saying. He said, people just don't realize how much I have to practice just to maintain what I teach every day, the number of courses that I teach. I have to go through that stuff and practice, and that really is really the the gist of being a professional. It's being able to show up and do the job and do it well and do it authentically. But nobody talks about how much preparation goes into that beforehand. Let's take touring Germans. Let's say you're out with a, you know, a bro country uh, act or you're oh, no. out with a pop act. Many times those players will feel like their playing is going downhill in a lot of areas. Why is that? Because they spend 23 hours traveling, sound checking, waiting around, eating, sleeping, and they have a 60 minute show that they play every day. And that 60 minute show is in a very small uh, range of their ability. So once you do that for five, six, seven months on the road, you find that you become rusty in other situations. And when they come home, maybe they get a session that they're like, oh, I love doing that. But then they need to really shed for a little while to get back up to speed with that material for that session.
you see the same thing across many fields. Let's take lawyers, for instance. One may uh, may specialize in payroll law, while another one's going to specialize in criminal law, while another one's going to specialize in injury. Uh, they have all these different situations, whereas if you took the criminal law and put him into a payroll law type of a situation, he'd be like, whoa, wait a second, I need a little prep time because I can't go to court just yet. It's the same thing with us. Many drummers, their skills and their, their range of motion, if you will, within styles is much larger than others. But I guarantee you there's a se there's several sets of situations where they said, you know what, if you drop me into that West African drumming group, I would not do well right now. I need a little time to prep that. And that really is key to being a professional. It's being able to show up, be prepared and do that and not let everyone know that that was the situation that a few weeks ago you were not so comfortable with. So why am I bringing this up and why are we talking about it? We're talking about this because I hear from a lot of drummers in my email, comments, messages here on social media, where they're talking about and putting a ton of pressure on, and it's one of the reasons why their practice time is so skewed. They're saying, I just feel like I need to learn everything all the time right now. And I used to have that. I, I used to think I needed to know the 83 different, you know, Cosgrove patterns for the right hand on the right cymbal bell for every mom. You know, I used to think I needed to keep that logged in my head. But see, we as humans are not great at storing tons of information in our brain. What we're really good at doing is having a place for that information. So, okay, we've learned it. I know I can do that. And if I ever need to learn that information again, I have that resource right there on that shelf. And then our brain goes, okay, cool. We got that taken care of. Next thing. So that whenever we get that session, we go, ooh, let me brush up on that. Ooh, I've got a gig with nothing but brushes. Ah, there's my resource. There's my old material. Let me get that back out. Let me play a lot of these tracks. All right, I'm ready for the gig. It may not take you that long, but I guarantee you there's some prep time that needs to happen for these drastic changes within a professional environment. So my message to you in this is you have time. Don't put so much pressure on yourself that your practice time winds up being this scattered mess. Focus on just a couple of things, go deep on them, and then know that once you get those learned, you have that. Keep those resources, put them on your shelf, and then whenever it comes, hey, you've got X gig, ooh, cool, I have those resources, I've learned that, or I don't have those resources, I need to go grab those resources, I need to woodshed this hardcore for quite a while, and then I'll have it. So there's always gonna be this push and pull, this ebb and flow of material coming in and out of your playing. Some things will stay for, for all the time, and then some things you keep on your shelf that you can go back to you can brush up on for whenever the situation arises. But don't fool yourself that you can be a jack of all trades all the time. I don't care what drummer you bring up, they are not a jack of all trades all the time. There is some obscure world rhythm, there is some situation where you could put them in, they would be uncomfortable, and they would not perform up to what they felt they should with no preparation. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, click that thumbs up button, share it with somebody that you think may enjoy it as well. Leave me a comment. I wanna know what you think about this. What do you think about this topic? What are your biggest struggles in your practice time? Have you felt this guilt before? Let me know in the comments section as well. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Check out the other videos. I'm releasing them every week, but whatever you do, I'll see you here in the next video.